Okay, so here's my new setup. After a whole bunch of work with the Jewel Thief, and I mean hours, I came to the conclusion that, to the best of my own ability, the only real application is when you need to cheap out on your batteries, basically. Um, and that can play a factor. Um, mostly in when, of course, like your garden light, you want to use a single double A. Or, at the 3.2 volt level lithium ion, I thought it might be applicable, but really it isn't because the batteries themselves are almost the perfect voltage for LEDs. So doesn't really hold water as far as I'm concerned. Of course, you know, we've all seen certain applications like uh, laser sabers, met glass toroid. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> you watch that video and, uh, you know, you gotta go, hmm, I do, and I'm sure most people do. But, you know, videos can be very misleading, and it's easy, I mean, you go through my videos, and I'm the first one to think, you know, this, this, that, and the other thing. But, this little engine, what I really want to learn is to build a cheap buck converter, or a switching mode power supply would be ideal, but you would have to basically be building a 100 watt or greater LED lamp or well maybe not that much but you know in the in the 20s 10s even a 10 is questionable what I'm saying is is you want to be creating a huge amount of light to justify the cost of the switching mode power supply that you put together for it for big huge yard lights to illuminate outside okay yeah it's gonna make sense but your average little camp light not so much so anyways you can see the lights pretty good on this one here um, what I'm doing is I'm using a pulse width modulator circuit to fire 90 LEDs now um, you might ask me why am I firing <laughs> 90 five millimeter LEDs and the answer to that question is because I bought them and I've been sitting on them for a while so what you're looking at right now is 630 milliamps at 12.2 loaded voltage all right now I'm going to show you this sheet just going to hold it on here for a sec Okay, and you can pause back on that. But what that sheet is, is the LED array calculator. And I fooled around with running them straight, like they do. Uh, in your typical... Here's the other thing. When you're talking about alternating current LEDs like that one, they've got the market covered. You probably cannot buy something, or you cannot make something better than you can buy for cheap. But on the 12 volt market, they just kind of assume that everybody's camping. And as soon as you, you start getting specialized with 12 volt living, holy crap, that's when it's, the stuff gets stupid expensive. For example, a 40 watt CFL for an RV is $126 in Canada. <laughs> anyway, so here's the notion that you have your PWM controlled by a voltage divider so you can bump down as low as you want and you can go as high as you want to the point of frying all your LEDs which is the reason why they don't sell you a product like this now as you see as I step this up Okay, to the 
about the 600 range. Um, if I here's something maybe you can tell me. If you go, and I mean ever so slowly, up to a point, you can actually hear the LEDs starting to sing. Now I'm not entirely sure if it's the PWM that causes that or whether LEDs do sing when they're being driven too hard. Um, but I do know this too, if you wire up a lamp like they show you on the LED calculator with resistors, when your battery starts looking like that, 12.2 volts, this one's been running for a long time, now you, you probably would do your calculations based around 12.4, 12.6 volts, depending on how big of a light it is and how much you think it's going to load it down. Point being, when that battery hits 11.8, your light is dim as can be because it's constantly voltage dropping. Whereas this situation, you could you could bump it up. Now uh, the circuit for this is um, on my other, it's on my flip-flop inverter, um, it's the exact same circuit, uh, so I'm not going to repost it, and it's all over the internet. Um, a lot of guys use this circuit for HHO, it's just a MOSFET driven by a PWM. Um, now, what I'm trying to figure out is how can you set a governor? Mind you, if you do put a governor on it, then you can't step it up when your battery goes all the way down to, say, 11 volts. You wouldn't be able to still get full brightness. Because essentially what this thing is doing, and I'm sure you know already, is all those those LEDs are wired for 9.6 volts. And I'm using the duty cycle to bring the root mean average voltage down to the point where I don't fry them. Um, but the thing about it is is that you cannot put, right now I cannot take a, a uh, probes off of a voltmeter and drop it across one LED and see what the voltage drop across one of them is to see how close it is to 3.2. You'll get some num number like 0.2 or something like that. Um, it, it just doesn't work. I'm not on my meter, it doesn't anyway. <coughs> Maybe you can tell me that too. Maybe a, an RMS meter would tell you. Um, neither one of these are. So neither one of these is, is totally accurate. I'm just using it as a reference point. So, you know, if you got any pointers or hints on how this can be done better, then uh, I, I'd love to hear about it because I'm trying to, you know, make it as sensible as, as possible. It is a very cheap circuit. You can scrounge up nearly all of that stuff. You can scrounge up a 500k pot or a 100k pot for your voltage divider. The 555 timer, you can find those and stuff and if you can't, they're cheap. The MOSFET, you'll definitely scrounge up. Um, the uh, I've got some 1N4148RF diodes but they might not be necessary. Um, and I'm not even sure why they're in there as such. You could probably get away with normal ones. Um, you know, that's about all there is to it. It's very simple. Right? Now, if you do this with switching mode power supply where it's constant voltage, constant current, it's going to be a more intelligent solution. However, building one custom, one off, buying the transformer and blah 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 it's you know um, I'm looking into it but the same token you know right there you have five dollars worth of LEDs and um, that's 90 LEDs I got those for it was less than five dollars for those and uh, the pot I scrounged up from something all the capacitors I scrounged up the 555 timer is maybe 50 cents. A couple diodes that I bought, you know, you're looking at under six bucks for a potential seven watt LED. Now, um, I can't actually, you can't even buy one AC for that. 
and when you use an inverter to run your AC lines, you run into trouble there too. So, you know, this is basically what this is intended for is that that outdoor setup where you've got, see I scrounge these batteries and I hit them with the bedini and bring them back to life too, out of the old UBSs, so that that's free. And then um, I use these little solar panels over here, these little cheap guys, the amorphous, because they're good in partial shade, I like them, and they're $10 a piece when I uh, get them on sale at Canadian Tire. And they, they put out about, uh, well, between 80 and 120 milliamps at 120 volts, or pff, at 21 volts. So, you know, you throw a couple of those at this, set it to a moderate level. Now, when I get done with these, I'm moving on to one watt LEDs, but I'm trying to learn a good way of doing it. But, uh, you know, if you have some hints where I can go mainly for regulation, like it would be kind of nice if I build this for somebody else to have it so that if you crank it all the way up, then that would be that. You know what I mean? It would be set for a battery reading top charge. Those will sit at 13 volts. Let's say you set it up for that, and no matter what, no matter how you turn that knob, you're going to be okay. So anyway, we'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching.